Astronauts on the International Space Station will head out on a spacewalk Sunday to work on new solar panels. The two astronauts started the job on Wednesday. They paused their mission because of an issue with one of their spacesuits. The crew will install a total of six new, more powerful solar panels in the coming months. The station's original solar panels have been running for 20 years. NASA says that they're still functioning well, but are starting to show signs of wear. For more, I'm joined by CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Bill, I love talking to you. So let's talk about the space station's operational life, because its span runs all the way through 2024, but NASA's hoping to keep it running longer. How important are these power upgrades for extending that lifespan? And how long now does NASA hope to keep the ISS up and running? Both good questions, and they would like to keep it running through the entire decade. Uh, they think structurally it's sound. It would be able to be safely operated uh, through 2030, 2029, somewhere in that ballpark, at least, maybe a little more. Uh, but a couple, the big question is, like you say, you got to upgrade this thing to get more power. Uh, they're bringing on commercial users now. They're talking about putting a commercial module on the space station. All those things require power. And as you say, the current solar arrays are working great. But, you know, it's like the battery in your cell phone. Uh, over time, they, they slowly degrade. And so the new solar arrays they're putting on uh, will get them back up to factory fresh power levels, if you will, the same power levels as when the original arrays were new, and that's going to help them increase the uh, commercial activity aboard the space station and, and get all the experiments and the science that they want to get done. Well, we do know that that commercial activity is certainly increasing. Uh, Bill, I want to talk to you about, uh, I don't know if it's fair to call it a space race, though I, I kind of like to think of it that way, China building its own space station. Um, earlier this week, mm -hmm. as you know, they sent three astronauts up to it for a three-month mission. Bill, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about the Chinese space station, and will it actually be a competitor to the ISS? You know, it's really interesting. The Chinese are have a very slow but steady space program. They don't do a lot of quick, uh, you know, it's tortoise in the hare kind of thing. They're not fast off the mark, but they're very, very methodical. And they said all along they were going to set up a space station that they wanted to operate in the 2020s and eventually send astronauts to the moon uh, in the 2030s and eventually on to Mars. You know, the same sorts of aspirational goals that NASA has. Now, this space station that mm -hmm. they just launched, they just put up the first module. Uh, there's three people living inside right now, as you say, for the next three months. They're going to add modules to it. And when it gets complete, I think it's going to be roughly the size and capability of the old Russian Mir space station. It's certainly not anything as large or sophisticated as the International Space Station. But on the other hand, it's state of the art. You know, this is all material uh, that, that's going up right now, with the latest technology, the latest electronics. And they're inviting other countries to join them, just like NASA does on the ISS. And I don't know that I'd call it a competition, but it's certainly uh, evidence that China's there to stay in space, no question about it. And I mm -hmm. think that uh, NASA certainly feels that. They see them in the rearview mirror. And I think the politicians in Washington do as well. Yeah, because there are some of the similar goals uh, being pursued right now by China's space program, as, as the U.S. has. Um, the moon, as you mentioned, Mars. Uh, I wonder if, is NASA concerned at all with the progress that China is making? As you said, China's saying that this is, this is much like the international goals that NASA has and has in the International Space Station. But, but it does seem like there is some level of, of competition, particularly when it comes to Mars, right? I think there may be down the road. I mean, NASA has a huge head start. Uh, the Russians have, in fact, launched a, and landed a lander on the surface of Mars, a very impressive technological achievement. But, of course, NASA's been doing that for the past 20 years. And the space station, there's no real competition there yet. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting. The, NASA's forbidden by U.S. law from engaging directly with China on space. They're not allowed to talk to China about joint projects or, you know, maybe having Chinese astronauts come to our space station and vice versa. It literally is against the law because of concern uh, that China could, uh, you know, take technology that's developed over here and put it to their own use. Um, that's a political issue. It's kind of a bit of a hot potato. And until that changes, I think what you're talking about is probably true. NASA's going to be looking at them with with not concern. I think NASA welcomes everybody uh, in space for peaceful purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it's, it's not like we're, they're going to go somewhere we can't. 
Uh, that's not it. I think NASA would probably like to take advantage of their expertise and vice versa, uh, but the political climate's got to change before that can happen. Hmm. Uh, Bill, before I let you go, I want to ask you about SpaceX on Thursday successfully launching a new GPS satellite for the U.S. Space Force. That was the first time a Space Force payload was launched on a previously used rocket. How significant is that for the partnership between SpaceX and the U.S. government? Well, I think it's fairly significant. You know, the, the Space Force said that over three missions by using reflown boosters, they're going to save 54, no, 64 million dollars over what they would have had to pay for brand new rockets. So I think Space Force looks at this as a win-win situation. It's going to save them some money. Uh, SpaceX, as you know, launches so frequently now. Uh, this is a, a way to get payloads into space rapidly and at a lower cost. And SpaceX has certainly been arguing and lobbying for this. This. Uh, uh, permission from the government to use reflown boosters because it helps them in their launch cadence. And so I think it's a, it's a big deal for both sides uh, in terms of saving the taxpayer money. And for SpaceX, it helps them plan their launches and sequence their rockets uh, the way that makes the most efficient sense, if that makes any sense. That certainly is a... It does, it does, and that certainly is a lot of savings um, and also helps in that same way to propel people uh, and all of our, our space goals. Bill, always enjoy talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.